All right, so it's come come to the point to put the new uh, cam synchronizer in. I got the oil drive shaft on it. I kind of put a little oil on the gear. We're going to just sort of drop that kind of down in there. And what I want to do is we need to get that get that out of the way of the pipe there. We need to get the rotor aligned with the mark where it ended up on the old one when I pulled it out, uh, which it's not not there right now. That's going to be pretty much impossible to do on camera, so I am going to work on that and then we'll hopefully show the the good results. All right, made a couple of attempts and I think I have it. So, I can point at this. If I can see what I'm pointing at here, I'm trying to look in the camera or not in the camera. So the very edge of the vein of the old one I pulled out lined up right on the edge of this casting notch where I had the blue mark on it. So it's lined up right right on that edge. And then uh, I have a blue paint mark that was on the, the old one that lined up with this, I think some kind of oil plug or something in the casting. And that lines up with the blue mark down below that's on the timing cover and then I had another mark here which was I think a little less accurate um, this white paint mark that lines up with this parting line on the timing cover casting so I think it's I think that's in the right spot um, and I have everything lined up I'm going to put the hold down bolt in and the hold down bolt with the big washer goes in that hole back there and before I give the final torque on that I will uh, double check it one more time and then we can proceed with reassembling things so before I put this in here and I don't know if it's a good idea um, I think this is an oil impregnated bronze bushing in there and I decided to put some zoom spout turbine oil on it, which is the same sort of stuff you use to uh, oil motor bearings, just to give it a little bit of a pre-lube um, in case it was a little bit dry in there from storage. Um, seems to turn quite freely. I also sprayed down the gear itself with some, you know, a WD-40 just so it had some initial lube on it as the engine is starting up. Um, I don't, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of oil that gets splashed in that area um, down where that gear is. Um, even though there's a timing chain in there and it must get oil somehow or the, the chain would, would fail. Alright, so I'm going to, let's get that hold down bolt in there, do a final check, and then start working on reassembling things. Alright, I think I got the on washer installed and everything tightened I had a tweak around on this a few times I was trying to hopefully get it perfect um, on older engines um, and maybe this one applies as well they have like a 10 degree base timing so if you were to mess with an 80s era engine like this um, there was something called the spout you pulled out and then that would take the computer out of the picture on the base timing and then use the timing light um, down on the crank pulley and set your distributor to get I think it was 10 degrees and then after you were done you would you know tighten your distributor angle up and then plug this spout connector back in and then the computer would take over I'm wondering if uh, this also has that same thing however a I don't think anyone uses timing lights on stuff like this. There's no way to really do it anyway unless, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. That's probably why they have an alignment tool for this and then you, you put your crank pulley 
at some uh, top dead center location and then uh, there's a little fixture that goes on instead of the pickup sensor that's supposed to be in the right spot and then you set your uh, angle on the cam sensor and then tighten it down at that point. Um, so that all being said, um, it's always a possibility this thing is off a hair. Um, try to get it as close as I could in the position of the previous one. It's certainly not grossly wrong. Um, there's always a possibility that it, it could be off a degree or something. And I keep wondering, even on the, the, the top dead center method, I mean, if your top dead center is off a hair, you're not doing any better than this. I mean, truly the timing light method is probably more accurate as far as, you know, establishing a known spot. At any rate, um, I'm going to start proceeding with reassembling things, and I think the next thing is the uh, EGR valve. And before putting him back on, I thought it was worth inspecting this in case it was like full of carbon or something. And looks pretty clean, relatively speaking. Um, it's not stuck. I have a, a little vacuum pump I hooked up to the the diaphragm here and pumped it up, and sure enough, the uh, oh, the valve was moving, so it's not stuck. I don't see any gross carbon deposits. Um, haven't experienced any problems with this thing, you know, prior to this problem with the cam synchronizer. Um, so we're just going to put it back on. Um, the gasket here isn't. It's a little bit damaged, and the uh, there's some torn remnants of the one spot um, down on the uh, flange that this goes on. But I haven't touched them, so. One hopes that just bolting it back on, we should be all right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll do that, and then we'll start working on the uh, this heater pipe to get him reinstalled, and you know, kind of work backwards on on all the assembly. I don't want to get too far into it before uh, putting the uh, the actual pickup sensor back on that cam synchronizer. Before it's hard to get at it. Yeah, so this should go fairly straightforward reassembly, and I don't think it's necessary to uh, have all these detailed steps in the video. Um, anyone that's worked on things can, you know, probably figure some of this out. Okay, um, got the cam sensor sensor part put on, the wires plugged in, I have the uh, heater pipe inserted into the water pump, I put a little more RTV on the o-ring before I slid it in, felt around in there to make sure there wasn't any reason it wouldn't fit. Um, I'm a little worried that it might leak um, just because it was disturbed um, with RTV and an o-ring on it. Uh, at any rate, um, let's see here, we got that hose clamp is on, and that hose clamp is on, and then the EGR valve has been reinstalled, and the two bolts put in, and the pipe and the nut put on. I did put some anti-seize on the, the two bolts, not the nut, maybe I should have. But it came out earlier, went back in, no problem. Um, the only next step is to put the upper radiator hose on and connect it over here to the upper radiator neck. And at which point, uh, once I've got that done, I should be able to put some coolant in here and then, you know, obviously put the air snorkel assembly that has the uh, ox, you know, not the, the mass airflow sensor in it and everything. Put all that stuff on and then we can try a test start and see if our squeak problem is fixed. That would be a, a wonderful day to celebrate if that's the case. I'm really, I really hope it is this time. I've certainly spent too much um, time and treasure on this one trying to determine this one and 
There isn't much else in here that it could be if it is, uh, unless there's like a catastrophic internal engine problem. So at any rate, um, yeah, radiator hose, put some coolant in here, hook a few things back up, and we should be uh, getting close to uh, doing a test drive again, or a test run. Okay, just started it up after getting that can synchronizer replaced. And we're going to let it warm up a little bit. I didn't get all the coolant back in it that I drained out. There must be some air in there. So we'll let it warm up a little bit. See if it burps that coolant and I can pop it back off. Um, it's been running almost a minute now. So far I'm not hearing anything, which is good. And also that the truck started right up after messing with that cam synchronizer, which could affect the timing if I screwed up the uh, positioning of that. So that's good. So I think we're just going to let this, this run here for a while. And hopefully, uh, hopefully there's nothing, nothing more to be said about it, really. Maybe I'll put the old uh, stethoscope on it as well, just for, for giggles. I almost hear a small squeak, but I'm probably all paranoid. Absolutely. With all the trouble I've had with this, I'm kind of kind of having some anxiety and paranoia going on, for sure. pause here and uh, hopefully the next time I come back on this I'll be putting the fan shelves and stuff back on. Okay I let this run long enough that upper radiator hose was just starting to get a little warm indicating the thermostat starting to open. Uh, looking for any leaks around that o-ringed pipe there. Um, I don't see anything. The overflow tank here has uh, has burped and there should be enough room in there now to pour the rest of the coolant that I drained out earlier um, down there. And then the whole time I did have it running, I did not hear any squeaks, which is good. Um, the last couple times I'd started this up, I certainly had squeaking starting long before the you know, length of time I had this running this time. All I could hear was a little bit of a little bit of gear noise down there which is probably normal and you wouldn't even hear that normally when there's a fan attached here but and like I was saying um, a little bit of uh, gun shy paranoia going because of all the all the things I've had apart on this truck trying to resolve this problem so hopefully it is resolved so uh, it's not too hot I don't think I can uh, worry about burning myself to put the fan shroud and the fan in here now uh, which I think that's that's the next step and hopefully this is fixed and I can get a go on a, a shake drown drive or two um, to make sure there's nothing else going on with this thing okay so got the uh, fan fan shroud and then there's this large piece of uh, plastic, I don't know what air deflector I guess is probably what you'd call it, all installed, um, topped off the coolant and probably take this truck for some shake drown driving a little later. Um, hopefully I'm all fixed. One of the problem areas is trying to get that fan shroud on or off and I don't know if you can see that down there. There is I think you can see that. There is a bolt that holds the fan shroud to the radiator and it is directly and very closely spaced behind this air conditioning hose. Um, so it's extremely difficult and annoying to, to uh, 
try to get that out and then back in again. Um, end up using a wrench and then trying to fish the bolt in and out and drop it on the floor a few times. Um, get it started and the speed nut threads crooked on it goes. So that's definitely a, a poor thing right there. You can't take that hose off, move it. It's got, you know, free on under pressure in it and you're not going to be bending on it or anything. It's a dumb place to have it, either the hose or the bolt, one of the two. I don't know which came first. All right. Um, yeah, we got everything all back together here. Um, hopefully it's uh, it's good to go um, after way more uh, time and treasure has been spent on this. Because if a person knew what the if it was the cam synchronizer from day one, we could have avoided a lot of extra work and expense. So I think um, hopefully we'll call this whole project a wrap and to move on to whatever other things we got problems with.